Um, I've got one. I, yes. I, I've been amazed how just in two years our country has turned from believing in capitalism to just careening down the road towards socialism. My son has friends, um, computer field that he works with in Europe, were asking, what is happening in America? So my, my question is, if in an ideal world, or my ideal world, um, come November elections, there's a new majority, okay. could Obamacare still be repealed and overturned? Yeah, let's, um, uh, for, does anybody else want to talk about that topic? Because I want to get you talking about it, and then we can come back and draw some conclusions, and maybe some principles. Is that fair enough? Anybody else? Did you want to talk about it? Yes, sir. Yes. Uh, I'm lucky enough to be a retired postal employee. Mm -hmm. I didn't bring the guns with me, so don't worry. <laughs> anyway, uh, but I do know a lot of people that are without health insurance. And I know that these are the people that are I think Obamacare is great. The problem is we're getting into socialized medicine and I was career military for a while and I know what it's like. And I think what we need to do is find some way to help these people that do not have health care, whether it's an inexpensive health care or, or something like that so they're not saying I need $5,000 worth of back surgery uh, and I'm a waitress and I can hardly walk, just as an example. And, you know, <coughs> somebody just saying tough bananas. Uh, and if there is care available for that, some way, shape, or form now, let people know. Okay. Because, uh, as I said, I've been military and I've seen what something like Obamacare will do. And I've done, gone with the VA hospital being a disabled vet, and I know what that's like. And people don't realize that that's what it's gonna be like for everybody. Okay. And I think that uh, maybe, I don't know if a public service announcement or, or something like that, or an interview somehow, in some way, shape, or form, excuse me, you know, spelling it out, you know, so that the people really know what it's all about and do something about it. I think the biggest problem we have, I'm not trying to deviate, is the lack of information from the Republican Party. And people don't realize that that's what it's going to be like for everybody. Yeah. Here. You know, Go ahead. I came from England 45 years ago, and this country was far better country. basically the same system that it was before and it's going to work just as well. It's just that more people are going to be involved in it and I think the people who are on the low end of the scale are probably going to end up still waiting in long lines and stuff. And they're going to
going to get, you know, not as good health care as the well-to-do people who can afford to pay for extra plans, but that somebody's going to get something under this, okay. and that it's mostly just changing the insurance. It's not changing who hires the doctors. I mean, I think the doctors are all still going to be privately, you know, working for private corporations and stuff. So I'm very concerned about having the government getting bigger. I mean, it's something that worries me, but it doesn't worry me as much as having people without health care going to the emergency room and running up, you know, five hundred thousand dollars. All right, let, let's let's try to bring all this together. Um, the uh, did you guys get the chart back there? Yeah. The, the flow yeah. chart? Yeah. yeah. That's the flow chart. <laughs> well, that's, that's a, uh, we're wondering where the flow is. You've got, so we're we're trying to figure it out. You, you've got to start with that. Um, the Congressional Research Service, CRS, uh, is what's available for members of Congress. Uh, to add. It's our library. It's at the Library of Congress. And we ask the question, uh, how many boards and commissions uh, will be formed uh, as a result of, of this 2,000-page-plus health care bill that was passed and signed by the President? And they came back with a statement that they can't estimate. It's an inestimable. Estimable. They can't estimate uh, the number uh, based upon the language uh, that, is in the, that is in the statute. They don't know. And the more that bill is out there, the more people don't know about exactly what is in it. When the whole issue came up, in fact, starting several years ago, um, when the Republicans actually controlled both houses, we never had a 60-person uh, majority in the Senate, which is necessary under their rules uh, to be able to pass a piece of legislation. Uh, we came up with uh, three or four core <coughs> principles that served as uh, the principles in our position on health care. Uh, first of all, with regard to the people that can't get insurance um, because of a pre-existing uh, malady. Big issue. A state of Illinois has always had uh, the side risk pool uh, that you can apply to. The problem is it's expensive and people can't afford it. And so our position on that was to look at most states already have in play uh, uh, some type of relief for people that really fall between the cracks. And the easiest thing for the federal government to do is to, is to supplement that with money to make it cheaper for people to buy it. The second thing uh, is in terms of what we call association health plans uh, to allow small guys uh, to join together in large purchasing then if the pool is large enough, you can actually form your own co-op, uh, or you can, uh, or, you, or you can contract uh, with uh, an Hello. insurance company. And uh, the more people you pool, uh, the the better bargaining power you have. That takes care of many times uh, the issue of pre-existing illnesses because if you go to work for a large corporation, uh, you'll be put onto their policy, and they don't worry about if you have a pre-existing illness. Third thing is to allow uh, people to, the ability to purchase insurance across state lines. Uh, everything's on the internet. Uh, it's kind of hard to define interstate commerce when somebody's in Maine uh, and the office is in uh, California and they're selling a policy across the border to Nevada. So open it up. The fourth thing is we have to bend the curve of the cost of healthcare insurance, and that is you have to have some type of liability reform. Uh, there's a physician here in town who's a neurosurgeon who's paid over $500,000 a year for medical liability insurance. Wisconsin's come up with a program uh, that has uh, premiums are about a third to half of the people in Illinois, if not cheaper. And in those very extraordinary cases of a tremendous amount of, of damages, uh, they, they have a, a contingency fund um, that supplements uh, normally the caps uh, that a state would have. And so you have to have those four elements involved in insurance, uh, in, in medical liability reform or insurance reform for the, for the whole package. 
those are pretty simple. And the House passed on three different occasions uh, association health plans. Uh, it filled the Senate by two. The House passed on two different occasions the um, uh, medical liability reform, and it was never taken up in the Senate, and that's where it died. And so you take a look at what would have happened if enough members of Congress had voted at least for those two. It could have dramatically changed the way people buy insurance in this country. And as many of you have said, it's not a matter of health care reform, it's a matter of insurance reform, because the health care that we get is the best in the world. Instead, uh, we got plans that were drawn by professors, um, people who had never been out in the field, uh, who looked to find a European style or Canadian style to be uh, the best possible. And we ended up with a bill that, quite frankly, uh, we're going to get surprise after surprise on it. My big concern uh, is with the folks that are in the medical profession. Uh, where are they going to go? What are they going to do? And it's really frightening when you talk to the people uh, that are in their 50s. They're just talking about leaving. Because what this bill will do in the state of Illinois is that 650,000 people Medicaid, or a doctor that gets Medicaid reimbursement uh, doesn't even get enough money uh, to begin to pay the bills. Uh, more people in the end would go on Medicare. The more you have Medicare, uh, the more pressure puts on doctors, and there are doctors today that are not accepting Medicare assignments because there's just not enough money that's involved to pay their bills on it. So I just, uh, it's, not, it's not a good bill. Uh, people were cheering, they had never read it, they had no idea what was in it, 